We said that there were some experimental findings that led us to the idea that angular momenta can be coupled for electrons. Recall that the electron has two kinds of angular momentum, one arising from its intrinsic spin and the other arising from the fact that it's going around the nucleus, the orbital angular momentum. And we say there were two ways of coupling that, those two kinds of angular momentum. One was to first take the, for each individual electron, take the intrinsic spin and couple it with the orbital spin and then doing that for each electron and then take the combined spins for each electron, the combined angular momentum, and interacting those. And that was called JJ coupling. The other way to do it was to first take all the intrinsic spins of the electrons and couple them, all the orbital spins and couple them, and then interact that sum of the intrinsic spin and the orbital spin. And that was called, we said, Russell Saunders coupling, and that's what we're going to consider here. Russell Saunders coupling is useful for light atoms, typically Z less than 30. If you start going above Z, that's the atomic number, greater than 30 for heavy atoms, then you run into some problems. There's very strong interaction as you go to higher atomic number, very strong interaction between the spin angular momentum and the orbital angular momentum. So you can't add up all the intrinsic spins and all the orbital spins and interact them. You have to interact each one uh, separately to get a total spin, total angular momentum, and then interact for each individual electron and then interact those. All right, so let's consider just Russell Saunders coupling. It's also called LS coupling. What we do is we first couple the angular momentum. Now let's see how we would do that. Let's take two electrons and these two electrons, here's electron one and here's electron two. These two electrons have each a spin of one half. So S, each electron has S equal one half. So electron one and this S can be oriented in two different ways. Actually let me uh, make it a little simple, we'll just draw that two-dimensional plane there. So here, S can be oriented this way. This is M sub S equal plus one-half. And it can be oriented down here, M sub S equal minus one-half. And recall that in three dimensions, these would be going around here, these form a cone, and these form a cone, like that. All right, so that's for electron one. We have the same kind of picture for electron two, spin of one half. We can point it this way, or we can point it this way. Now what we want to do is to sum these two. Uh, since they're, they can be quantized in space, we have to sum them as vectors. So let's look at various combinations. Let's say, um, first consider an electron here, so with that orientation, m sub s equal one half, and also this orientation, m sub s equal one half. So there we have them lined up this way, and so the sum of those will be s1 plus s2, that will be one. All right, let's look at another orientation. Let's say m sub s equal plus one half on this first electron but then m sub s equal minus one half on the second electron. And recall these are going around this way and uh, this darn pen here, recall that this electron is going around this way and this electron is going around this way. And so you add up all these vectors, what you're going to get is s1 plus s2, that's going to be zero. So all the vectors that point up this way will cancel out all the vectors that point down this way. Essentially you have a cone pointing up, a coin, cone pointing down. You vector sum those, you get zero. Let's consider some other cases. Uh, let's consider the case where, let's say the first electron is pointing down and the second electron is pointing up. So we have that plus that. We said the sum of those is equal to zero, so a big S, let's call the sum, the capital letter S, that's equal to zero. And let's look at the other case where M sub S equal minus one half for each one. So here the vector's pointing down, the vector's pointing down. Now note that this big S is a sum of the spins, not the M sub S values. So if both spins point down, the sum of them will still equal one. 
although the projection on the z-axis may be different. So what we find by vectorally adding up these two spins is that we either get 1 or 0. So that's what this means. S can be either the sum of the spins, which is 1 half plus 1 half, or it could be the difference in spins, absolute value, 1 half minus 1 half or 0 in integer steps. So it can be 1 or 0. So that's how we're going to add up the intrinsic angular momentum, the spin angular momentum. We're going to say it could be, it'd be 1 or 0. Or in other words, you add up the spins, you subtract the spins, and then you can go from the addition to the subtraction in integer steps. And for these two electrons, there's just two values, 1, s1 plus s2, 1 half plus 1 half, and that's 0. Or it can be equal to 1 half minus 1 half. Sorry, oh, I can't even add. <laughs> 1 half plus 1 half is, I believe, 1. <laughs> and 1 half plus 1 half is minus 0. So you can either get 1 or 0, and that's the only two cases. Now we have this then, it represents the sum of the individual electrons and now we can now project that on the z-axis momentum. Let's just do that. So now we're going to look at the sum of the intrinsic spins. We're not going to consider them individually but we're going to add them and then consider the total sum. For the previous example we said that s could be 1 or 0. Let's take the case s equal 1 that total vector s can be projected on the z-axis in three different ways, just like we can for the any other angular momentum. We can project that total value s equal 1 up here, we can project it along here, or we can project it along here. This will correspond to big M sub s equal plus 1, big M sub s equals 0, and big M sub s equal minus 1 so that the projection on the z-axis will be plus h-bar, here it'll be 0, and here it'll be minus h-bar. So just like individual spins, s1 half could be pointed plus 1 half or minus 1 half, when you have the sum intrinsic spin equal 1, that can be pointed up this way to give m sub s plus 1, 0, and minus 1. So this is the case for s equal 1. For s equals 0, well, s equals 0 implies no angular momentum, and that then implies that the only value of m sub s, big M sub s, has to be 0. In other words, the projection along the z-axis will be 0 h-bar. So let's look again, let's take two uh, electrons, uh, L1, and we'll call this the first electron. We're using lowercase to indicate for each electron. And here's electron 2, we'll call this L2. And let's make, uh, I don't know, let's make a p orbital. So L equal 1 and L equal 1 for electron 1. Let's go ahead and do that. With L1 equal 1, that means that the vector can be oriented this way, or this way, or this way. So here this is m sub L equal plus 1, m sub L equals 0, and m sub l equal minus 1. And we're doing this because we have to add up the angular momenta of each in electron, and those are vectors. So we have to figure out where the vectors are pointing. This comes from the spatial quantization of angular momentum. So that's the l equal 1, and then we'll do the same thing for the second electron, l equal 1. We have one pointing up this way, yeah, one pointing that way, and one pointing that way for different values of m sub l. Now let's vector add them. Let's add them when m sub l equal plus 1 and m sub l equal plus 1 for the two electrons. So in that case you have electron here and electron there. So this means we'll use the big value of l or big capital L to denote the sum of the little l's. So when they're one pointing this way and another pointing this way the big value of l can now be 2. It'd be 1 plus 1. So that's the case where they're both pointing up. Let's point one up and one this way. Let's do an m sub l equal plus 1 and m sub l equals 0. So now we have one pointing that way and one pointing this way. And recall these are vectors here. And this would just be a vector in this plane. So we add a vectors that pointing this way with vectors that just are in the plane. This will just have the vector when we add them up, the vector pointing this way. So big L will equal 1. 
And similarly, if we have, well, let's, we're running out of space here, but let's keep it on the same page. Let's have m sub l equals zero for electron one and m sub l equals zero for electron two. So there, what we're doing is we have an electron here and another electron here, but they're spinning around this way and the vectors that they spin around in the circle on here, those will add up to zero. So L is equal to zero. Actually, so <laughs> maybe don't quite see that. So let's rotate this around this way. So let's, this is a Y axis. We're now looking down the Y axis and this is the XZ plane. So we have vectors this way and this is rotating around this way and that's for at one electron and you have the same thing with the elect other electron it's spinning around this way forming a circle forming a circle around there you add those up what are you going to get you're going to get L equals zero and then you do any other combination the only combinations you're going to get are big L equal two the sum equal two the sum equal one or the sum equals zero so that's what this means the big va the value of the sum of the orbital angular momentum is the sum of the individual angular momentums integer steps all the way to the difference. So we have L1 equal 1 and L2 equal 2. The maximum this can be is L1 plus L2 is 2. The minimum it could be is 1 minus 1 is 0. Integer steps would be 2, 1, 0. And then similarly like we did for the intrinsic spin angular momentum, we have now that total angular momentum L, the total orbital angular momentum L, so for the case of big L equal 2, where this represents the sum of the individual electron orbital angular momentum, we can imagine that that total vector L can point along the z-axis in uh, several different directions. For example, it could point here, where the projection on this axis is 2 h-bar. It can point here, where the projection is 1 h-bar or it can point here where the projection will be zero, point down here where the projection on the z-axis is minus one h-bar, or it can point down here where the projection on the z-axis is minus two h-bar. This will correspond to big M sub L equal plus one, sorry, plus two, plus one, zero, minus one and minus two. Now what we want to do is to couple S and L, add them vectorially to get J. And we'll do the exact same thing we did for S and L, and we're going to get J. So J is going to add them vectorially. So J can be L plus S to L minus S. Maybe you can see that already, but let's go ahead and do that. Now let's just take an example, L equal one, big L equal one, and big S equal, say, I don't know, for instance, one half. All right, so we got to draw these here. So now we got big L, the sum of the orbital angular momentum. Uh, let's say this is pointing up this way, pointing this way, and pointing this way. So this is L equal one, and it can be projected plus one h bar, zero, and minus one h bar. And we have to worry about this because we're going to add them vectorially. And let's look S equal one half. And let's see where that's going to point. Well, S equal one half means that you either have it pointing up this way for m sub s equal uh, one half or pointing down this way for m sub s equal minus one half. Now we're going to add these two vectors and see what happens. Well, if we add this, say, m sub l equal plus one, zero, and minus one, and this is m sub s equal plus one half and minus one half, let's add m sub l equal plus one and m sub s, sorry, this should be capital M because we're using the sum. This would be capital M. So let's make those capitals. Capital M sub L is plus one and capital M sub s is say plus one half. Those vectors are going to add. So here a vector going plus one and another vector plus one half. So the sum, which will give the symbol J, will be three halves. Now let's take another one. Let's take, uh, say, the M sub L equals zero and the M sub S equal, say, one half. 
Let's see how those add up. So m sub l equals 0 will be pointing here. We have no angular momentum. m sub s will be pointing up here so that when you sum them, j will be, well, just that one there, this one is 0, is 1 half. And you take all other combinations, and what you find is that j, the couple, can be l plus s in intersteps to l minus s absolute value. So if we have L equal 1 and S equal 1 half, J can be the sum of those two, 3 halves, down to integer steps. 1 minus 1 half is 1 half, so it could just be two values, 3 halves and 1 half, corresponding to adding up this way or adding them up this way. So that, in a nutshell, is Russell Saunders coupling. One other uh, piece of information, now that we have the total angular momentum, we can now uh, project that on the z-axis and get values of m sub j. So in this case, what we have is, let's do the j equal 3 halves. So project that. That's j, sorry, my pen is not working very well today. This is, uh, call this m, sorry, big m sub j will be plus 3 halves. This, by the way, is for j equal 3 halves. Here we have m sub j equal 1 half, so we can point that way. m sub j equals minus 1 half, or we can point down here, m sub j equals minus 3 halves. The spin quantum number can go from j to minus j in integer steps. So here we go, 3 halves, 1 half, minus 1 half, minus 3 halves. The point here is we no longer talk, when we have LS coupling, we no longer talk about the intrinsic spin or the orbital spin. Instead, we talk about the total angular momentum, which is J, which is the sum of the spin and intrinsic orbital angular momentum. And the reason we do that is essentially conservation of angular momentum. If we look at the coupling of L and S, that j, that j is conserved. And conservation of angular momentum is an important uh, thing to conserve. And it's a, what you have to do in physics, if you have a conservative system, which we do here, we have to conserve angular momentum. And the way we do that is to have total angular momentum, the intrinsic spin plus the orbital angular momentum. That's what we're going to conserve. And so Russell Saunders coupling means LS, you're adding L and S together, the L and S, each one is determined by the individual electrons, and we now have a single total angular momentum. This is the one that we have to talk about. These are the good quantum numbers, not the individual L and S quantum numbers. All right, so let's go back and look now at uh, the Lyman alpha line and see whether we can figure out what's going on there. That was originally prompted us to look at spin-orbit coupling. And so the Lyman alpha line, this is the H atom. Okay, so here is n equal 1 and n equal 2. For n equal 1, you just have a 1s state. For the n equal 2, you can have a 2s or you can have the 2ps. It's 2p. We said the selection rule does not allow the 1s to 2s. That's not allowed because delta L for a single electron, delta lowercase l, has to be plus or minus 1. So this goes from L equals 0 to L equals 0. So that's not allowed. So the only uh, lines that are allowed are these lines here, 2p to 1s. And this is the Lyman alpha line. So these are allowed. This is a Lyman alpha emission. All right, so these are degenerate. So let's actually just do that here. Uh, and we'll call all these 2p's, we'll just say this is a 2p and this is a 1s. Now, the electron here, so we now have one electron. One electron in this orbital, so L is equal to 0 and S is equal to 1 half. So if we do Russell Saunders coupling, coupling here, we'll have only J is equal to 1 half. All right, so there's only two values, or only one value of J. Remember, well, maybe we don't remember. Let's go back here. J can go from L plus S to L minus S. Since we have a single electron, big L is the same as small L. Big S is the same as small S. And so, single electron, 
1s, that means L is equal to 0, that's what that s means, and s equal 1 half, that's just a single electron. So j can go from L plus s to L minus s in integer steps, so L plus s to L minus s, absolute value, j can only be 1 half. Now let's go up to this p. Here L is equal to 1 and s is equal to 1 half. This again for a single electron. What does this mean? This means that j can go from L plus s, and again it's a single electron so we don't have to add them vectorially like we did before. j can go from L plus s to absolute value of L minus s. So what does that mean? Oh, this means that L, j could be 3 halves or j can be 1 half. That means you have two different values of j here, so what this means is that you split this energy level. Each value of j will have a different energy, and you split these energy levels. This is not split because there's only one value of total angular momentum. Here you have two values of total angular momentum which you have different, and this is what gives rise to that splitting in the Lyman alpha line. That's Russell Saunders coupling, and uh, we'll uh, develop this idea in the next couple modules in just a minute.